I'll go back just a little bit, um, back to the T cells, the cell mediated response here as per the end of the last video. Um, and then the idea that you could put the whole thing into cartoon versions. Now, there is a flow chart in the textbook that really you should be looking at, which kind of explains how we get from the bone marrow cells to the various different cell types and then chemicals that are being um, produced as well, communication chemicals. The immune system as such, I believe in total, there's something like 20-ish different cells and another 15 or 20 communication chemicals, not only histamines, but there's also something called a cytokine, which you should be aware of. Um, cytokines, they literally, a bit like macrophages, are, so a bit like histamines are causing the swelling cytokines are causing a more directed response so a specific response as well as just kind of generally come here and eat this up so you've got on the one side you have got the come here and eat this up stimulation for your macrophages all your different macrophages all your different um, phagocytic cells to come along and just um eat and um digest whatever has been found and tagged or whatever is not self but also you've got the the clonal expansion so the different clones of b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes that have been have already met the correct on antigen for them they then divide more rapidly um clones because they are obviously all identical genetically when you do need a large population of those that all would attack the same antigen and they would all make the same antibody against that um, it also the cytokines as well stimulates these cells to not only divide but stimulates the b lymphocytes to then make antibodies they won't start making it beforehand now if you've got a condition like aids where the HIV, HIV virus, I should actually say HI virus, the V stands for virus, um, are attacking and destroying the T helper cells. Once you've no longer got T helper cells, cytokines will not get made. The cytokines will then therefore not stimulate B lymphocytes. Antibodies do not get made and um, agglutination will not happen. And uh, the whole engulfing of some some um, invader will become a bit of a challenge which is why AIDS as such will usually lead to to the death through a secondary illness not actually AIDS itself but through a weakened immune system in the context of COVID you may have heard the word uh, cytokine storm an overreaction of the immune system where literally own cells get destroyed and destroyed and destroyed to the point of um, your alveoli in your lungs actually becoming leaky because there's so many cells missing, fluid build up in the lungs and then bacterial growth in that fluid and inability to breathe because there's fluid. So a whole um, host of um, conditions that come out of that cytokine storm. If you want to research further there a little bit. Right. Then on your list, and our list of things to do was the primary and the secondary immune response. The primary would be after a quick time, it would be relatively fast, that macrophages, all your bigger white blood cells, would come along, engulf, and at this point, not yet know what they've eaten up. They have got no idea yet. It just wasn't self. It just wasn't self. So we'll take that up. Now, the actual antigen can then by the macrophages be presented in a way that encourages the right B cells and T helper cells to to proliferate as well. Now, it's a bit of a complex way. The macrophage engulfs the pathogen. The pathogen is starting to be taken to pieces, digested away. However, one one or two antigens, so those literally those surface markers, whatever glycoproteins or glycolipids they are on those surfaces, they are being embedded in a particular protein that literally is then attaching. Um, it's it's allowing the presentation of that antigen on the surface of the cell, which basically then means to the T helper cells and the B plasma cells, that's the one. That's the antigen you will need to um, need to be able to fight. The T helper cells then direct the antigens. They're secreting the cytokines and the B plasma cells. They produce and secrete the right antibodies for about three weeks when that's happening. You also um, 
the the actual flowchart that I've mentioned earlier is on page 277 in the textbook. It's a flowchart which starts with the stem cells in your bone marrow and ends up with all your different cells, the communication between the different cells. I believe this flowchart is really worth looking at. I haven't taken a picture of it for this video yet, but I'm sure you can find the textbook in the link already. Graph. This sort of graph um, you may have seen actually in GCSE days with regards to, right, if you get a vaccine, you get a first immune response. If you get another vaccine, you get a higher immune response. That could come to you with proper scales and maybe something logarithmic to go with it in an exam question. So what would you have if you've got an initial exposure to a pathogen or to parts of a pathogen, so not necessarily a full bacteria, but maybe just an antigen from the surface of that bacteria, let's say tuberculosis, where a broken, damaged um, few bits of the cell wall are being exposed, literally put in a vaccine and injected, which means you've got a first immune response recognising, oh, there's a pathogen there, you've got the build up of B lymphocytes, the B lymphocytes then stimulated by the T helper cells with cytokines to then produce the antibodies. Antibody concentration rises, gradually falls again after about three weeks um, as the infection is considered to be over and done and dealt with. There will be a few memory cells left behind. Those memory cells will, upon a second exposure, if you've got your memory cells already there, your B and T memory cells, and you're exposed to the same antigen again, the proliferation of the B, B plasma cells, the B plasma cells that then produce the antibodies, will be faster because you've got some memory cells already. Then the clonal expansion happens a whole lot quicker and your secondary exposure leads to a much higher antibody concentration faster and higher. Look at the graph differences. You've got a longer lag phase at the beginning in the primary response, so faster and to a higher concentration. That would be two changes that you could see in the same um, graph itself. Now, a secondary response, like I said, it relies on the memory cells and it only helps if you've got the same antigen. So if you had been vaccinated against tuberculosis the first time and you were given a different vaccine for hepatitis, then that type of response would not be seen. However, if you get a second tuberculosis shot and a third tuberculosis shot, usually that is the for life vaccination, um, vaccination series that happens during childhood. Now, it may last even even decades after first exposure, but sometimes you may need a repeat and another repeat. Now, even small amounts can trigger it. It's going to be having that latent period where nothing does happen yet. Your clones need to exp um, expand first. So clones need to just cell division, just mitosis. And yeah, antibodies are produced up to 100 times more if you have got memory cells already and no symptoms will develop if you've already got memory cells. That's the whole idea of vaccinating somebody, that you've already had an exposure. The proliferation of all your B lymphocytes will be faster and therefore immune, the antibodies being produced at a higher number, much faster before you even get symptoms fighting the pathogen. That's the sort of graph that I thought you might potentially get in an exam. Let's um, all for a for a while at that lovely y-axis with that logarithmic scale. Aren't we loving it? So you'd have um, going well, literally from zero to ten to a hundred to a thousand to ten thousand. If you remember the logarithmic scales from the population unit to make sure you can present large and small data into the same graph, as it would otherwise not work. Um, and here you've got um, two different lines. The blue line here for the primary response and the secondary response to antigen A, and literally um, a second line in case there was no, no antigen B presented earlier. OK, it would be a first exposure and it looks similar and it doesn't help because antibody B is not identical to uh, antibody B will not trigger a, be triggered by antigen A. Antigen A triggered antibodies for A to be developed. The antigen B has not yet had that previous phase of infection with it, and therefore no memory cells for B are 
um, available for this one. Just as a food for thought, if you were an examiner, what sort of question would you ask on this here? Um, there's also a little animation on the actual EDUCAS website itself. They've got a cold test as well. I'll refer you to that in the next slide as well.